Andrew Wiggins is back to practicing, but still no live action or preseason games in his forecast. How big a deal is this? We're discussing on today's Locked On Warriors, plus a little Kings Golden State preview ahead of the Wednesday preseason game. We got Matt George from Locked On Kings on today's show. You are Locked On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Oh, what's the good word, everyone? Thanks for making Locked On Warriors your first listen of every day. A lot of ways you could check us out. YouTube is one way. If you're there, go ahead and subscribe to the page so you get Golden State news, you get Golden State banter, and you get Golden State post-game shows thrown your way after every single game and whenever content needs to be delivered aka monday through friday and after every single game we're also available wherever you get your audio podcasts you could take us on the go that way be sure to subscribe today's episode is sponsored by game time download the game time app create an account use code locked on nba for 20 dollars off your first purchase we are part of the locked on podcast network your team every day My name is Charlie Walter, formerly a 95-7, the game in San Francisco, covered the Warriors there. That is the flagship station for Golden State. Also covered the team for CBS News Bay Area, call letters, K-P-I-X. Saw them win a championship and covered the team in 2021-2022. Andrew Wiggins was, aside from Steph Curry, the most important player on that team during the playoff run. There is no doubt about it. The Warriors would have not hoisted their fourth trophy in the previous 10 years had they not had Andrew Wiggins playing at the level he was playing in that game. Unfortunately, heading into the regular season, his status is somewhat, I don't know if the word is murky. We're going to discuss that on today's show. Also, Moses Moody, he wants his money. Is he going to have the opportunity to show what he can do and show why he deserves the cash. He did look very good in his first preseason game, but we're breaking that down and answering those questions. Also, the Sacramento Kings host the Golden State Warriors at Golden One Center on Wednesday. That is the uh, 9th of October. We will preview that game with Matt George from Locked On Kings. But let's start with the big news. That's Andrew Wiggins because he's back to practicing after missing all of camp. But when I hear back to practicing, I want the the caveat there. And the caveat was no live action. Steve Kerr said that Wiggins came back from summer in great shape, uh, does not expect this injury to set him back too much. And he said Wiggins is still on track to be ready for the start of the regular season. Let me repeat that. Wiggins is still on track to being ready for the start of the regular season. Hold up. What? I mean, I get it. This is an undisclosed illness. We saw him with the mask on in Hawaii, but being back on track to be ready for the start of the regular season is not what I want to hear. Coach Kerr. The Warriors have five more preseason games. They begin their season in more than two weeks. I mean, good Lord. I am not a doctor, but I would hope, and I don't want to speculate, but good Lord. Can I please get some better verbiage? then on track to being ready for the start of the regular season. Because this makes it seem like he could be a DNP in the preseason. And it is imperative that Andrew Wiggins gets some run this preseason. It is vital for Andrew Wiggins. Here's a fact, everyone. The better option is the available option. It's, you know, the only thing I truly believe in in life. The better option is the available option. My mind races to 99 years ago. Great time. Wally Pipp of the New York Yankees, a first baseman, had a headache. I'm sure you've heard this story. He asked out of the lineup, said, Coach, my head's beaten down. They don't have this thing called ibuprofen yet. At least I don't think they did. I I don't know. I'm not too familiar with 99 years ago. Anyone in the chat, anyone in the comments, if you're familiar, let me know. But a 21-year-old Lou Gehrig came in and replaced Wally Pipp that day. Gehrig ended up playing, what, 2,129 consecutive games. Thus, the term was created, you got Wally Pipped, a.k.a. someone's healthy. They come in, and the person that is not feeling good at the time, as soon as they are healthy and ready to go again, they don't have a spot anymore because the other person came in and shined. 
We've seen it in multiple sports. Carson Wentz of the Eagles was playing superb. He gets hurt. Nick Foles comes in. Next thing you know, the Eagles aren't willing to you know commit to Wentz long term. It changed the trajectory of his career. You could make a debate that you know Tom Brady kind of Wally pipped Drew Bledsoe in a way. Bledsoe hurt. Brady comes in. The rest is history. You could draw modern day comparisons all the time. But case in point, the available player has the opportunities. Now, do they always capitalize? No, but they have a shot to capitalize. And in this case, I think of two specific players, Jonathan Kaminga, but even more so than Jonathan Kaminga, because Kaminga is going to get run regardless. I think of Moses Moody, who was the... 11th man off the bench in the Warriors' first preseason game. Thought it was interesting. Moody sat down with the voice of the Warriors' uh, radio team. That's Tim Roy. And Tim introduced Moses as a swing man. Specifically noted that he didn't call him a shooting guard or a small forward because of the fact that he doesn't know what Moody is. Swiss Army knife. So he just said swing man. And I've assumed, like many, that Moody's fighting with like GP2 and Buddy Heald, and Pajemski, and DeAnthony Melton for that, you know, shooting guard position. But maybe a few of those guys are more point guard, shooting guard combos, and they have a, a different tier that's, you know, shooting guard, small forward, or just positionless basketball to some extent. Wings. Moses Moody, the wing. But maybe the Dubs have to start looking at Moody getting some minutes, especially in the preseason, at the small forward, at the three, at the wing. Wiggins having a bounce back season is probably top three most important variables to Golden State having a good year. It's huge. Wiggins needs to be good, and everyone is banking on Andrew Wiggins being ready to go for the start of the regular season. And as of four or five days ago, last we'd heard, he was in incredible shape. He was ready to put up maybe 20 points a night. Steve Kerr wanted him shooting six, seven threes. Now, all of a sudden, I'm hearing, you know, undisclosed illness. I'm hearing he's not good to go for live action. And look, there's a good chance that Andrew Wiggins only misses one or two more preseason games. Like we all originally thought this wasn't going to be anything serious. But you hear the term, or I guess the quote, on track to being ready to go for the start of the regular season. And it makes you wonder. But as of right now, He's currently unable to go. And the Warriors' first backup plan was starting Buddy Heald at the three and Moses Moody being the 11th man that came off the bench. But if Moody plays the way he did on Saturday, you got to find a way to get him on the floor. And this is coming from someone that has not been a huge Moses Moody stand. Someone that's always said Moses Moody is solid, but I've never been one like many of you that watches this show that thinks Moses Moody is a starter on a championship level team. But what he did on Saturday, I want to see more of it. I want to be proved wrong. I, I'm i transparent. I love being proved wrong. What I did see was 12 points in 13 minutes, a couple threes. Moody's plus 14 was a game high. He had three offensive rebounds, two steals, a block. He played for a championship caliber team, a team that won the championship in the Western Conference Finals in 21-22. After one of those games in Dallas, the question to Kerr was, hey, why'd you trust Moody in this situation? He was getting serious minutes in the Western Conference Finals. And Kerr's answer was, we trust Moses. We think that he's polished beyond his years. He's going to make the right plays. And in a big situation like that, age is just a number. We felt confident with him in there. And boy, that things changed a little bit over the last few years. To say the least, Kerr said this about Moses Moody's growth. He's a really good shooter, and he's at the point now in his career where he feels where the closeout is. I think early in his career, he was more hesitant, but the offense flows a lot smoother when he just catches and shoots, and I love when he's doing that, which he's been doing all week. Now, am I changing my mind after a few comments and after one preseason game that Moses Moody should be a featured player on this team and not a, a solid role player. Hell no, I'm not saying that whatsoever. It's one preseason game. But I want to see him given a role that gives me clarity one way or the other 
If he had such a good camp, then why was he the 11th man to enter the game with no Wiggins, mind you? I mean, Buddy Heald at this point is a 31-year-old journeyman. Effective? Yes, he's a very good basketball player. He's one of the best players in the world, and he can be effective on an NBA team. But there's a reason he's a former lottery pick that's making $8 million a year and is now on his fifth team. Why not give the minutes to the guy that you just spent a 2021 lottery pick on that you gave minutes to in the Western Conference Finals in his rookie year that continues to get buried on the roster? And now Steve Kerr is talking about how it's a numbers game. He used those words in his press conference on Tuesday. And numbers game it is. And Moses Moody is going to have to force Steve Kerr to play him through his showing in the preseason. Coming up, I want to continue this conversation. Why is Steve Kerr hesitant to play Moses Moody more minutes? And the Kings, Warriors, tip it off from Golden One Center on Wednesday, the 9th of October. We are previewing that game with Matt George from Locked on Kings. That is coming up. Hey, NFL fans, you could start the season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, so much more, and you could do it on the same page where you place your bets. Interactive, baby. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. Looking at the Western Conference. Oklahoma City has the best odds to win the Western Conference Finals. It's a plus 330. Then Minnesota at plus 420. Dallas and Denver tied at plus 500. The Suns at plus 1100. And then you got to go all the way down to the Golden State Warriors at plus 2200 to win the Western Conference Finals. That's 10 to win 220, folks. And you know what they say about FanDuel. You know what they say. $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. When you place your first $5 bet, five to win what? 110? You'll absolutely take it. Visit fanduel.com to get started. But when Kerr says it's a numbers game, the only thing these players can do is go out, have a great camp, make it really hard on the decision makers. And Moses is having a great camp. He's playing great. All he can do is just keep doing what he's doing. That's what he's doing. He keeps doing what he's doing. I talked about how, you know, one of the reasons that I've never really been fully behind Moses Moody being like a cornerstone player or someone that can change your franchise is just because of the the physical talent, the God-given abilities that he somewhat lacks. I mean, he's a big guard, got great size, good shooting motion, uh, very good IQ, I would say, and just a good feel for the game. And in fact, intangibles were words, uh, a word that was attached to Moses Moody and his draft scout. But another thing that was attached to him, words that were attached to him, aside from, you know, instincts and high level of understanding the game were lax explosion, especially on his first step. He could do a little bit of everything, but he's not really great at anything. Aside from maybe just playing basketball. We all knew those people growing up. Maybe he didn't have the most talent in the world, you looked at them, you watched them play, you saw their mechanics, you looked at the shot, you said, no, he's not the best player on the team. Then when the ball tipped off, he just had it. He was just a good player, knew how to play the game, and could score. It's kind of what Moses Moody's been. In the last game he played against the Kings, he was the second leading scorer with 16 points. He had the best plus minus. It was the last real game he saw last season and the most important game of the season for the Golden State Warriors. And granted, they got shellacked, but not because of Moses Moody. He played well. He backs that up with his first preseason game after a camp where all reports say he has been phenomenal and plays great, and Steve Kerr still won't commit. He just says, you know, he's got to keep doing what he's doing, and maybe he won't be the 11th man. He'll be the ninth man. So it's tough to see. It's tough to see. And as someone that is not, is not, a firm believer that he is the next big thing. I will still stand with the Moses Moody stands out there and say, I want to see him play more, especially in the preseason. That's my take. And it's a simple one. So Andrew Wiggins, if he comes back and you know, is playing by next week, so be it. 
But if not, in this situation, if we don't see Wiggins for a minute and he misses the entire preseason and Moses Moody plays really well, Wally Pip. Remember, a lot of people in the sporting world get Wally pipped. I saw a tweet after the game on Saturday. Warriors beat the Clippers after Lindy Waters hits the game-winning three as time expires and found it pretty interesting. Everyone was fired up. Pajemski looked like the Warriors just won game seven of the NBA Finals on a walk-off three. You know, Kyle Anderson's running into the pack a, a little bit later, but he's fired up. And then at the very end of the shot, you see Moses Moody walk in. And granted, it's him from behind. So maybe he's smiling, yelling, like, I don't want to speculate. I don't know. But the body language from behind, I mean, whoever says that, he had terrible body language from behind. He just didn't really look like he cared as much as the rest of the guys. And someone tweeted, quote tweeted, Moses walk into the celebration thinking, great, Lindy Waters, another guy coach can bury me behind. And I'm a firm believer of trusting coaches over the fans. They see these players a lot more than me, we do. So I would imagine that Steve Kerr has a reason that Moses Moody is not playing as much as the fans would like. You know, Chris from HR, respect him, but I trust Kerr, who played under Phil Jackson and Greg Popovich and has been a Hall of Fame level coach in the NBA. I, I trust him more than even the most diehard of NBA fans. I trust him more than the diehard NBA fans that even coached at the high school level or played at the collegiate level. But coaches can be wrong. Happens all the time. I mean, for God's sakes, what? Huggins from the Yankees back in the day. In the last few seasons, Moses Moody was buried behind a Hall of Famer. So you cannot complain there that Clay Thompson's getting more minutes than Moses Moody. Just seeing if... You know, when March rolled around that maybe there'd be a little bit of a spark and that the Splash Brothers in that connection would return when the ball rolled out for the playoffs. It was not the case. Can't complain about the Warriors adding depth to the position. Dunley V going out and signing DeAnthony Melton. They've they've loved Melton for a while. They've had him on their radar. So we'll see. It's going to be fascinating to see how it plays out. Andrew Wiggins, probably a... Uh, I'd say he's a pen or a Sharpie into the starting lineup, or at least the six man, the first man coming off the bench. It, it's hard to envision a world where, you know, Moses Moody, who was not in that second unit in preseason game number one. Instead, it was Brandon Bajemski, Buddy Heald, Gary Payton, the second Kyle Anderson and Kevon Looney. If you're telling me that Gary Payton, the second is better than Moses Moody at this point. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, Peyton, the defensive specialist, I get it. He has a role on this team, no doubt. But Moses Moody, to me, seems like a better player. So we will see if Moses Moody starts getting some of these minutes. All right, let's transition the conversation to Wednesday night's game at Golden One Center. That is home to the beam, home to the Sacramento Kings in downtown Sacramento. It's October 9th, a Wednesday. The Warriors travel up to the state capitol and take on Sacramento. Here is Matt George of Locked on Kings to break down that game and give us his thoughts on how Kings fans are viewing the Warriors. If you're a big fan of going to live events, then the Game Time app takes all the guesswork out of planning your event. It's very easy. Very easy. And we love easy. First of all, you get a panoramic seat view in the app before you buy, meaning don't just guess what your tickets look like based on some little chart that's, you know, from the 1990s. See it in real time, 360, panoramic, lowest price guarantee. If it's not, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. Also, your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. And my favorite feature of the app tickets go down in price the closer you get to first pitch to tip off, to kick off. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account. Use code LOCKEDONNBA for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code LOCKEDONNBA for $20 off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game time. 
All right, Matt George from Locked on Kings. You joined the program about halfway through, and I've been spending the entire show talking about Moses Moody and why he deserves minutes in some position, whether it's the two, whether it's the three. Find a way to play the guy. One of the guys that's ahead of him in the depth chart as of right now, started in his first game, is Buddy Heald, a former Sacramento King. You being the host of Locked on Kings has seen a lot of most likely more than really anyone listening to this program. So I want your take on me saying that I want to see Moody probably get more minutes than healed and, and just overall on Buddy's game. Uh, long term, I agree with you. I, I actually like Moses Moody a lot. I wanted the Sacramento Kings to try and make a, a, a play for Moses Moody. And when the Warriors ended up drafting him, I was not a happy camper. Uh, so I'm a believe I'm a Moody believer for sure. I think Moses Moody is a really good player. Um, and, and certainly is more of a part of the Warriors future than Buddy Heald is. Look, um, I am not the biggest fan of Buddy, the basketball player, Buddy, the human being, great guy, funny guy. Uh, I think fans are going to enjoy the sense of humor, enjoy the personality, and you are going to enjoy the availability. Buddy stays healthy and he plays. And that's a big deal for a Golden State Warriors squad that I know have dealt with some injuries and some off-court issues and things like that that have kept key players out. Buddy will play. He he takes really good uh, care of himself. He takes pride in that. Uh, he is a absolute hard worker. So there's no concerns with Buddy Heald in, in, in that sense at all. The issue with Buddy Heald, he is going to give you nights where the Chase Center is going to rock because he's on fire. And in that same game, it'll come down to the wire and he'll dribble the ball off his foot or he'll throw the ball into the third row. Like that is the Buddy Heald experience is Buddy. When he catches fire, it's, it's a, a, a sight to behold. Buddy has the greenest of green lights in his mind. And some coaches have enabled him to where if he touches it, he can put it up at any point that he wants. So there are going to be some moments where I can, I, I know how loud the chase center gets. I know how active that place gets. I've seen many a Steph Curry three point barrage in that building at the expense of the Kings. Buddy is capable of doing something like that too. And I think the Warriors will, will enjoy that. But Buddy in terms of basketball IQ at times, not great. And Buddy in terms of defense, non-existent. So those are the elements of Buddy Heald's game that you, you just have to be aware of. I think Moses Moody is better in both areas and where Buddy Heald might and is probably the better overall shooter right now. The gap's not that wide to where Moses Moody should absolutely not be playing ahead of him. So I'm, I'm kind of with you on that, Charlie. Buddy can get him off in volume, though. Let's talk about the uh, let's talk about the game. Wednesday night. Golden one center. The big storyline for the Sacramento Kings would be DeMar DeRozan, right? Mm -hmm. Playing in his first game at Golden one center. Kings have another star to the fold to go along with Sabonis and De'Aaron Fox and Monk is back. Uh, he signs in the off season. So all of a sudden a, a, a really nice piece wants to stay in Sacramento. They're looking to light the beam again this season. Just take me into the, uh, the Kings outlook from a, a media member a, a fan and just someone that follows the team's perspective yeah the debut of DeRozan is going to be the big storyline and that's what most people are going to be tuning in to to see and I think even some warrior fans are going to tune in to see what does DeMar DeRozan look like in in Sacramento uh, Mike Brown shared with us today that everybody who's healthy in training camp is going to play so we will see DeRozan. We will see Fox. We will see Sabonis. We're going to get a little bit of that starting group together. We don't know how long. It might be six minutes to start the game, and that's it. Might just be the first half. Who knows? Um, but we will see them. So we know that for sure. Uh, another big, I think, storyline is, is, is how the Sacramento Kings want to play. In particular, their physicality on the defensive end, which is something that helped improve them drastically defensively at the end of last season. Like they went from one of the worst teams in the league to about middle of the pack defensively. And last in the final third of last season, they're actually a top 10 defense in the league specifically because of how physical they were playing defensively. And the question is, can they continue that physicality without getting called for too many fouls? Cause that was an issue for them last season. So we're looking at that. And then a new um, element of, of Sacramento's offense that they're really trying to emphasize here in training camp is offensive rebounding. So they're going to send every. They're going to send a lot of guys to crash the offensive glass to either create more offensive possessions for themselves or limit transition opportunities by forcing guys to stay back. So 
from the Sacramento perspective, at least from my perspective, in addition to seeing DeMar play with Fox and Sabonis and all them for the first time and, and that excitement, it's, okay, what do these new staples of how the Kings want to play look like in action? What works and what doesn't? All right, so I'll counteract you there with you're talking about how they want to be physical on defense, the Kings do. I'm excited to see how the Warriors go up against a physical team because the mm. Clippers have some some decent bigs there, and the Warriors were able to light them up on the glass, uh, took advantage of them down low a little bit. So that is going to be an interesting wrinkle to this game, the, the physicality. Can the Warriors handle it early on? with an undersized team once again, but that's kind of been their, their mantra, man, undersized, but they're not, they're, they're pretty scrappy around the glass. I mean, they always have good numbers rebounding, especially despite their size. They did it in 21, 22. And I think the biggest X factor that I'm looking to see in this game, something that you talked about the Kings wanting to do is limit transition. That was almost the entire talking point in Steve Kerr's media day, along with a much better defense that returns the top of the NBA. The talking point was we need to get out and run. We need to limit other teams in transition. So from your perspective, that's going to be something to keep an eye on just transition defense against the Warriors transition. Oh, who has the better team to start? And that's where we'll end the conversation, the show today, man, who do you think has the better team this year heading in? I mean, no one's going to be surprised by my answer. I think the Sacramento Kings are a bias. Bias, hundred percent. Homer bias. Say what you want to say. I think. Look, let, let's put it this way, Charlie. And this, this is not just the bias. I think this is the outlook from the Sacramento perspective and from the Kings internally. The Sacramento Kings expect to be on a higher tier than the Golden State Warriors are. Doesn't mean they're going to reach that, but that's what they expect. You add Demar Derozan, you have this group together that feels that they've kind of exercised the Warriors demon by how the play uh, or the uh, the the uh, I guess yeah the play in tournament. Uh, game ended last year. The Sacramento Kings believe that they've kind of surpassed that uh, play in zone and are elevating themselves into, they want to be in the conversation with the OKCs and the Dallas's and the Denver's of the world. Again, doesn't mean they're going to get there, but that's what the Kings in their mind are trying to get to. So the expectation should be in Sacramento that the Kings are the better team. They go out, have to go out and prove it. Not that Wednesday is going to tell us too much. It's a preseason game, but it's, it's a good first glimpse at, what both these teams look like and, and how different and close these teams still are. The, the playing zone, man, that that's tough stuff that belongs to new Orleans and some of these, Oh God, it'd be tough being in the playing zone. So hopefully the warriors don't do that. Ho hopefully both these teams aren't in the, uh, the playing zone this season and, and I'll, get out. I'll agree that. with that. I'm with no that. doubt, Let's man. Do that. Matt George has got the tie hanging loose tonight. For those of you on the, uh, the audio podcast that can't see him, he's getting back to work. You can check him out on ABC 10 and, of course, Locked on Kings. Thanks for joining the conversation today, man. Charlie, looking forward to Wednesday's game. I'm sure we'll chat many times throughout this season. Northern California basketball being good is what we all want, so let, let, let's keep that going. No doubt about it. Locked on Warriors, free and available wherever you get your audio podcast. Peace, everyone.